30 seconds. Seven, six. Hey, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Fax number 310 4455. Dr. Drew, border, <laughs> board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. All right. We are uh, happy and uh, excited to uh, bring back to the show uh, Poe because uh, we have uh, <laughs> we've missed Poe. Poe was uh, on the show last. Uh, Two years ago? No. More. More? I think more. No, oh, about two? that. I think about two years ago. Really? Was the last one. Because then she I was, was on earlier. She was a weekly earlier. visitor. She I, was, a weekly. I was, yeah, you know. You don't remember? Mm, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, I, it, this is going to be flattering because it feels like a long time, which is oh, good. okay, that's good. It, it should feel, you know. It'd be worse <laughs> if it was two weeks ago. No, it's true. You it, were counting the minutes, I know. Right, so it's exactly. like it's so long. If you said, got it fast, I don't even remember. Yeah, it, it, it felt like, uh, it just felt like there was an absence of Poe <laughs> in the show, didn't there? Yeah, definite Poe deficiency. Yeah. Running at a Poe deficit yeah. for a while. Yeah. I kind of took a while to make my record. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're going to hear some of that tonight, right? Yeah, you are, totally. Oh, it sounds like bad radio. I'm like, no. <laughs> we're going to get a chance to hear sampling off the new CD, <laughs> am I right? Uh -huh. Okay, very I good. I believe so. Done and done. Uh, Mark, uh, her uh, brother, who is a uh, writer and um, a poet and um, everything. You guys, you guys do everything, right? <laughs> yeah, I everything. mean, you're you're a poet. And I don't do windows. But you guys, you guys are definitely artists, right? I guess so. Yeah. We look like artists, don't we? Well, now you were Actually, you were no. a contractor, a plumber. I was something. a plumber yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yeah, but it, that, that's when he was a struggling artist. I see. That's uh, that's before he arrived has uh, uh, authored a book, which is called uh, House of Leaves, which uh, is too thick for me. <laughs> I, I can never read all <laughs> this. 700 pages. Is it 700 pages? Yeah, it'll make a good paperweight for you, though. What's it about? It looks kind of cool. Yeah. It's, it's about a, a house that's uh, bigger on the inside than the outside and the family that lives there. Well, that sounds cool, but what's that mean? What do we, what well, do we have Well, imagine you there? went home and you found out that, you know, all of a sudden there was a hallway in the middle of your living room that hadn't been there before, and you can't see it outside, but it goes for miles. Really? It's, it's about that. It it's is? about what would happen if you discovered that space. Uh, what, what, goes, what goes on in that space? People get lost. I mean, everybody deals with that discrepancy differently, you know? The children sort of have fun in there. Right. The wife denies that it's there. And the husband hires a team to explore it. And, you know, ultimately it, I mean, it lives on a lot of different levels. It's like kind of, What's the on the main simplest level, it's like you can be sitting right next to somebody and be thousands of miles away from them. So and it kind of manifests that idea in tells you that story all, all i know is it's my cool. name is somewhere in this book and uh, <laughs> so, is, so is the word jackhole which is uh, <laughs> it seals it jimmy he coined he'll revere this book exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's the code that solves the whole problem too, why, so. why the interesting structure what is that uh, what happens there's a, there's a peculiar structure to the book uh, sure. it's actually a cinematic design it's 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 designed to to slow you down to pace the reader's experience through the book so that's um, interesting. So chapter nine is very convoluted, and it, it slows you down. And then chapter ten has one sentence per page. Yeah, it's and my so kind of. That's yeah. my kind of chapter. Chapter ten. Is <laughs> chapter you can start 10. there. <laughs> well, that, that's interesting. I'm I'm a guy who doesn't read and doesn't like to read, but I know uh, Drew, you read a lot, and uh, each uh, page you don't you don't look at a lot of pop up books like I do or stuff with a lot of pictures. <laughs> I love those things. Of cars, I like seeing pictures of cars <laughs> and trains. Me too. Choo choo trains normally, <laughs> and the books. And, uh, the next book. <laughs> Drew, the, uh, if you read a book like this, and this is probably why you'll not read it either, but you'll be stuck on a plane one day and you'll take a look at this when oh, you're yeah. not doing one of your Scantron sheets. Absolutely. And uh, 
it's kind of interesting in that it forces you to sort of break your cadence up mm -hmm. because that's the way it's laid out. I mean, you can't just sort of uh, speed read through it. It's interesting. And then you should listen to Haunted while you're reading it. <laughs> There's because... your bad radio again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true because the CD actually talks to the, uh, the book. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll hear at least uh, two cuts off of that uh, tonight, I promise. <laughs> All right. So uh, everything's good. You any can take any, the gun away from Any things we want to plug? Uh, um, I mean, any, any uh, upcoming events or anything like that? Well, we're looking to be on the road probably in the next three or four weeks. Unfortunately, we don't have, you know, set enough dates because plans keep changing. Right. Um, to plug them now. But I'll come back. Oh, really? <laughs> sure you will. That's what and you said over two years ago. But I came back, didn't I? Well, I got lost in a house with a big hallway. John? It took a while. Yeah. John, you're 20. What's up? Um, well, about a year ago, I met this girl, and I lost my virginity to her. Mm -hmm. And we kind of dated off and on once or twice, and then just stopped seeing each other uh, for different reasons. And then about a year later, well, three months ago, she had written me an email and it was just kind of a thing saying, you know, I may not see you again, but you'll always be my friend or something like that. And, and so I just gave her a call to see how she's doing and things like that. And then uh, she wanted to go out and hang out, and so we went and hung out. What's the question? <laughs> oh, well, um... <laughs> it's nice, but what's the question? Sorry. sorry. Well, uh, yeah, we started dating again, and about two days ago, she told me that she, after we broke up the first time, that she had sold her body for money. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe I it was some... That. You mean like prostitution or a yeah. science experiment? Sushi? No. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a, how, how long did she do this for? Uh, she said it was about a week with about four different guys. And yeah. why did she do it? Uh, she just said for money, but I'm like, what does a 17-year-old need money for? She's doing drugs? No. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, she's doing marijuana, but she does it very lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what is lightly? Um, maybe once, three times a week. Hmm. Yeah, it's not too lightly. <laughs> I mean, because we, we always do the math. Like, when you, you we always put a zero behind whatever number you give us. You say twice <laughs> a week, it's 20. <laughs> Four times a week, 40, and so on and so forth. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, John? Yeah. You're a 20 year old guy going out with this uh, semi kooky 17 year old who you lost your virginity to not too long ago. What's up with you? You lost your virginity at 19. Mm. You're you're still clinging to this uh, young chick you lost your virginity to. Why why can't you sort of get on with things? Well, I did. You know, she just emailed me one day. I just want to see how she's doing, and I just started dating again. Mm, you had other girlfriends. You've been with yeah. other women. Yeah, I've dated two other girls between me and her. Mm. I see. What do you want to do about this? Well, I don't know. It's you know, I I never uh, wanted to judge people for their past. Why'd she tell you? Because she wanted to be honest with me. Uh uh. Now. Nah. She's doing something. What do you mean? She, I mean, it sounds noble, but she's trying to stir you up. She's, she's trying to rattle you. She's yeah. manipulating you. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're the nice guy, right? You're going to ask. She usually no, normally dates a holes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, John is a nice guy and a truly available guy, so she's got to sabotage that relationship, make sure it really sticks a good like a stake right through the heart of this relationship and ends it. Why? And because she can't tolerate real intimacy. She can't, can't tolerate closeness. Huh. And the closer you get, the more chaotic she's going to feel and going to act out. Kind of true. And it's very tempting also to chase somebody like that. Yeah. For him. That, yeah, that can well, be extremely he's, he's, addicting. You're going to save her. the dam yeah. damsel in distress, and she's going to let you know just enough to make you believe that you can save her. That's why I miss Paul. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hey, John. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe you pay her, and then it's a done deal. Run. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're I walking down resist. that hall in the middle of the house all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I yeah, it'll resist. never work. you got to break up. Oh, yeah, I, I'm just, telling you. I don't know that we, we should be advising specifically what he should yes, do, but you should have yes, your eyes open. Should, yes. You should know what you're dealing with here. Yeah. All right? It's like us. All, all right. right there, John. Later. Listen, as a 20-year-old guy can't forget that kind of stuff. He's going to say, honey, I forgot all about it, and then he's going to get drunk a week later. Say, How much for a blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. How much? Come on, chicky. <laughs> you get some credit or I got to go to the ATF? Get out of here, baby. <laughs> You, you know, it's, it, you can't forget that stuff at 20. It just, it will never work. No. Drew, could you, what if you heard that at 20? Oh, sear a hole right through my head. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. I think I see one there, actually. No. Bob? Yeah. Bob. You're 19 there, Bob. What's up? Yeah, yeah um, I kind of have a weird abnormal abnormality with my uh, hormones. Um, I was born eight weeks premature and didn't really go to doctors much as a kid. I would get sick a lot, and doctors 
Uh oh. Oh, Anderson's messing around over there. Hey, Anderson. Hey. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Go. Bob, <laughs> Bob we, 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 we just we left you at, you get sick a lot. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, a lot of doctors couldn't explain what was going on. And I went to, I started a new doctor about two years ago, and he ran a lot of blood tests. And he discovered that my body produces large amounts of uh, female hormones as well as male hormones. So I'm producing a lot of progesterone and uh, estrogen and testosterone. And are you overweight? They, are you fat? Are you overweight? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, well, that, that will cause that. Why does a guy get overweight when he gets the uh, estrogen no, and it's, progesterone it's, it's not and that, that kind of stuff? It's not that oh, you mean that's causing it? The testosterone is converted in the fat tissue to estrogen. But if a guy had a lot of estrogen, circulating estrogen... He'd get a little, he'd get a little bit soft and pudgy-ish. Really? <laughs> yeah. But, but he, he wouldn't necessarily get fat. No, not necessarily. He'd just get more uh, as a woman looks yeah, normally, yeah. except for pudgy. Yeah, no. when, when it comes to this, I have a couple questions. Because the doctor I'm dealing with has never really dealt with this before, and he's trying to, to pawn me off on other doctors. And it's not pawning doctors. off. He, he shouldn't. He unless he's an endocr a reproductive endocrinologist, he shouldn't be going any further with this. So, can you make any suggestions as to who I should? Yes, see? you go to a university center and see a reproductive endocrinologist. Why don't you go to the guy he pawns you off on? I, I doubt. I doubt this is going to end up being anything, though. Frankly, how much do you weigh, Bob? What was that? How much do you weigh? About two fifty. How tall are you? About six foot. Hmm. You, well, what if you lost uh, 50 pounds? <laughs> Wouldn't that help? That, that would take care of the problem, as I see it. Bob? What was that? Can you just lose the weight? Well, I've been trying to lose weight, but it doesn't, it never seems to work well. Well, I mean, why don't you just be disciplined with your diet and your exercise? Have you done that? Oh, I, I am rather disciplined with my diet and exercise. What, okay. do you, what are you doing for exercise every day? What was that? What are you doing for your exercise every day? Uh, I rollerblade. No. Uh, usually six days a week. No, 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 no. What are, you, are you are you shooting no. a, a douche commercial? Are you trying to lose weight? <laughs> Please, rollerblading. How dare you? That's no way for a man to lose weight. <laughs> rollerblading. And you know what? He Guy, needs he needs to get a trainer and a, and a nutritionist or a dietitian and see if it really after six twelve weeks of that see if he can really get some change. Drew, would there have been any answer that you wouldn't have object, objected to though when he was going to tell if you? He'd said, I, I, if he said I if he said if I work I run hard for thirty minutes a day I would said oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what everyone should do. Jump rope. Yeah, actually. I'm skipping rope tonight. When we were on tour, he was jumping rope every morning. I was Mark, impressed. you were jumping yeah, rope? That yeah. Was it. You don't I mean, have to. You, you can, can take it anywhere. You can jump outside the bus in the hotel room, wherever. You, yep. You can take that uh, rope on the road with you, and you can do it all in about 10 minutes and be uh, sweating your uh, It's hard work. It's off. true. It's true. And you look great, great doing it, It, it kills me when yeah. people <laughs> say, people say I, I exercise. You, you should follow me through my day. I exercise so much every day. I go up and down the stairs of the office. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That no, doesn't count. No, no, no. No. That's it, called life. The problem That's is, yeah, it, you wish it all added up at the end of the day, but 15 <laughs> seconds at a time doesn't work. Even five minutes at a time doesn't work. Yeah, no, but, it, really. you know, it, it's weird, and it's uh, it's not fair, but, you know, I work construction for 13 years with a bunch of fat guys who are on their feet, <laughs> <laughs> on their feet Hauling. all day carrying lumber and drywall up flights of stairs. Yeah. You'd think these guys would look like bodybuilders. Uh -uh. Now I sit around uh, the man show w <laughs> with a bunch of fat guys, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but they're no fatter, the writers at the man show, you know? Right, and they sit around all day. They sit at a computer all day snacking, and these guys would be driving nails and carrying lumber all day. They didn't look any different. What's up with that? Do you yeah, think, I mean, not do you fair. Think there's something hidden under that construction worker belly oh, that yeah. is muscle and strength. Little and little racism. Oh. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, no, you mean you mean physiologically? Uh, yeah. You oh, know what I think it is. Yeah, you, you've got to get something going. If you're you're better. You're better off going real hard for like six minutes right. than you are yeah, going exactly. soft for forty minutes. Yes. Just that. That part of it. It's the kind of lifting they're doing, and the fact that they just they'll, they'll be they will be better conditioned, but they'll. Eat to compensate. Fast food. Yeah, because yeah, they're to tired. Of what they're, what they're uh, oh, yeah. burning off. Oh, Taco that bell. truck. Yeah, I cool. love. I miss that lunch I truck. <laughs> I'd like to get a lunch <laughs> truck at my house. That would be nice. Pull it into the into the living room. Yeah. <laughs> Honk <laughs> that butter da bum bum horn. Do, 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 think, do they got that me <laughs> do they got that Mexican horn everywhere or is that a, an Angeles, LA thing? Los Angeles. Yeah. What do they play in uh, Boston? Like bum 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 bum. I mean, they play like hockey themes or. Johnny Boy, or what are they? Do they have different stuff in different cities? Ba, 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 oh, really? <laughs> All right. George? Wow, a bunch of singers in here. Thank you. Who would have thought? George? Yes. 
And what's up with all our phone lines where everyone's calling from a pay phone in a subway tonight? <laughs> what's up, George? Uh, nothing. I'm on a cell phone. Um, question, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, for the past couple months, and I'm really, really healthy. I've never really needed to go to the doctors. I don't take medications, never done drugs. Perfect health. Um, I've been having blackouts at any time, and they start by me having severe pain to my right side of my around my temple, the top of my head, followed by a blackout on my right eye and tremble, uh, trembling on my right arm. Um, and I lose sight for about, I don't know, I really couldn't judge it, but anywhere from minutes to about 50, uh, 10, 15 minutes at a time. You're, you're driving a car now? Yeah, believe me, yeah. I, are, are you out of your mind? Um, well, you, you got to work and you got to do what you got to do. No, you've got to see a doctor. You haven't seen anyone about this? Um, well, okay, here's the thing. I went to a, a doctor, and I haven't seen, gone uh, to him since. Um, he's back in China. Um, when I went to the doctor, he told me that at first it could have been assigned to Parkinson's disease, but I didn't. No, George, Parkinson's listen. You're in the United States now. It, it's yeah. time to get some health care. It's it. What are you saying about the other? It's any of a hundred different problems, all of which are quite serious, and the fact that you're driving with this it mortifies me. You're not only going to kill yourself; you're going to kill someone else. Right. All right. This could. This is some sort of seizure disorder, probably, and God knows what's causing it. It needs a thorough neurologic workup, and it needs to happen immediately. Yeah, and listen, if you know, don't take us with you, buddy. I think that's what Drew's saying, right? Well, I know that's what you'd feel. <laughs> well. I mean, listen, I feel bad for him, and I want him to get help, but I, I don't know, want him to go across the center line and take out a family in a mi minivan either. Plus, he's been doing lots of traveling. I, there's, you know, things like cystocercosis and things. You can get tapeworms in the brain, all kinds of wild stuff no, you can get. No, listen, don't freak him out with the tapeworms in the brain. That's one of the most common causes of seizure in Los Angeles County right now. Tapeworm in the brain? Is that easy to treat? Brain? Tapeworm eggs go to the brain, and they take these little masses and cause no, seizure. No, they don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Is right. that simple to treat Who gets, no? Where's it's that coming from? Mexico. Shocking. How does that happen? Whether it get in the food or No, it, what? it gets, yeah, it gets in the food, then you get a tapeworm set up, and then it releases an egg into your system, and there you go. Ends up in the brain. Mm -hmm. And is it treatable? Yeah. Oh, good. Now, do they embrace the tapeworm in Mexico? Is that part of the culture, or are it's they the trying to eradicate it's that, the, too? It's a natural, national worm. No, the it's <laughs> the national worm. Oh, really? <laughs> is that what's in the tequila, or that's a different kind no, of worm? No, a different worm. That's a I see. It's a regional well, there seems to be some competition for worms it, it, over it, there. It was an entrant into the competition. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't win. The lobal tapeworm. It was too edgy. <laughs> <laughs> Narrowly edged out by the, the, uh, the, the intestinal tapeworm. You, 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 the tinea solium, and you can pass proglottids out your rear. It's a very lovely. lovely proglottids, proglottids out the rear. Sexy. Yeah, that's going to be the name of the third CD, Paul. <laughs> proglottids out your rear. Yeah. It's catchy. <laughs> <laughs> you almost made through spit on me. <laughs> Kim? I'm here to plug pro proglottids out my rear. Um, Kim? Kim? Kim, don't be scared. Hi. You're 14. What's up? Um, I recently just lost my virginity, actually on Friday, to a 17-year-old guy. And you're 14? Yeah. You're mm. right on course, mm. baby. Just where I'd like to see you at 14. And, um, <laughs> Going perfectly. He <laughs> used a condom. Like, first we weren't using condom, and then he put one on. And then he, I guess he wanted to go again, so we didn't use one again. And my friend was telling me that I could get pregnant off pre-ejaculation. You can get, con get pregnant off just what's on his penis. Yeah. Right? Is it, like, highly likely it's that I am? It's likely. It's not highly likely. Or How long ago did this happen? It happened on Friday. Hold on. Is there Jeez. a lot of difference between likely and highly likely if you really break it down? No. It, you it, know what I mean? Well, it's kids always want a percentage. What is my actual risk? I know, but you can't <laughs> narrow it down between likely and highly likely it, because it's about the same thing. Yeah, it's possible. Here's the deal. And you should have been taking that morning after pill if you'd really thought that there was a possibility. Well, I wasn't really expecting it to happen. It just. No, I know, but why don't you go out the next day and get the well, plan B? I was going to go on Sunday, but they weren't open. Monday. <laughs> yeah, you could have gone Monday. You still had time. Yeah. All right, baby. Well, listen. It, these are these are reasons why you shouldn't be having sex at fourteen. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, Adam, listen, you are I so uncool, you. pops. You are just so. Well, uncool. listen. I was an idiot when I was fourteen. I I thought I really did think I was going to be a pirate astronaut at fourteen. <laughs> I know I've said that a few times, and it's not a I joke. I still believe you could. I, I've given up on the pirate part, but I'm still shooting for the astronaut. I can see it. Rodeo astronaut, <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs>
I'm, I'm now doing another sort of thing. Are you practicing thing. up at that place on Sunset? I can't talk about it. Mechanical bull. But the, the point is, is, you know, you're 14 years old. We would say that's too young for sex. And this is why, because you're not doing the things that are, are appropriate. How do you feel about having lost that. your virginity? Mm, it's not really a big deal. No? Mm-hmm. No. How do you feel about the guy? Do you still talk to him? Yeah, I was talking to him like a half hour ago, actually. Are you in love? No. Oh, good. Why not? So why'd you have sex with him? Just curious? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I don't know. All my friends said that, like, they made it this huge deal, so I was like, hey, I'll try it. Were you doing drugs al- or alcohol at the same time? Um, while I was doing it? I mean, had you been drinking and smoking pot that were night? You hooked up to an IV with scotch <laughs> in it while you were actually having sex. Yeah, I smoked pot a little. Yeah, because, Kim, this sounds more like the, the need for arousal and distraction. This is what addicts do. Is there alcohols in your family? Um, yeah. Yeah, th- that, that's, that's what you got to watch out for. That's what this is the beginning of. This is about alcoholism and addiction, and you're, I'm telling you, that's what the, the road you're going down right now. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right? Thanks. All right, take care of yourself, Kim. I will. All right, slow down. Protection, right? Okay. Don't get pregnant. I will. Don't get strung out. Okay. Really try not to do much of anything. <laughs> okay? All right. W- wait to die like plan. Adam, yeah. Let's all just stay home and wait to die. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the utopia we'd be living in. Right, that would just Markets, be... Markets, empty, Woo! freeways, diamond lane. Completely Who needs it? empty. No, no one on the road. We're yeah, all right. home waiting to die. It's true, with piles of garbage out on the street that nobody's picking up. Ooh. Place would get smelly. Well, we would get we would get the trash men well, on. Only the Little anarchists. robots. That was in the anarchist world. In our world, there's still order. Yeah, there's still order in our world. So oh, yeah. oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Good. There's just air, air traffic. And, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's all about air Street traffic. Lights. For the astronaut rodeo <laughs> king. <laughs> All right, we're going to take ourselves a uh, little itty-bitty break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Maria. Yes, Drew, you want to speak to Maria? Sure. Okay. She's uh, lost all sexual desire. We'll make fun of her after this. <laughs> 1-800-LOVE-191. Hey, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Poe is our guest tonight. Mark Z. And I'm going to try to not screw your last name up. Daniel Lefsky. Ooh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Poe's uh, brother? Uh, interesting that Poe is the world's simplest name. And, uh, <laughs> Mark is the world's most complicated. Do you remember when, when you first met Mark? Yeah. Sitting in the corner over there. <laughs> yeah. You thought he was the big bad boyfriend. That's the, right. The bouncer. Remember? Yeah. yeah. The bouncer that well, I brought with me. His hair was white back then, I think. That's yeah. true. And then it went blue. Yeah, well, uh, Spontaneously Paul, grows like Paul that. and Mark are a uh, very close uh, brother and sister uh, team because you guys have been sort of out on your own for a long time, right? Yeah, true. Since we were pretty young. And also as very little kids, we traveled a lot. We moved from country to country like crazy. And so we Why? kind of... My dad was making documentaries, huh. so we lived in Africa for a year, like India for two years. Thorn, the thornberries. Yeah, I mean, it was. we were a gypsy family, and in situations like that, you can't really afford to have the same kind of sibling rivalry, because, I mean, he was the only guy I could hang out with, uh-huh. so we, I think that kind of made us very close early on, and we kind of figured out a lot of that sibling stuff, mm-hmm. of how to navigate those waters. You know, and and si- sibling rivalry could actually be good. You know, like he would write something and I would get competitive, but rather than take it out on him, I would write something, mm-hmm. and then we just kind of go back and forth. And the book and the CD reflect a lot of that because ultimately they're talking about the same history in very different ways. You know, I had the uh, same sort of competitive spirit with my sister. I'd you know, I'd get a C in a class, she'd pull a D. She'd get the D, <laughs> I'd go for the F. <laughs> I got the F, she dropped out of school. <laughs> it kept going. It's it, like the martyr life. syndrome. She dropped out, yeah. you, got, you got arrested. I got arrested, yeah. she moved back home in her 30s. <laughs> I mean, eh, we work pretty hard at <laughs> it. What are you doing next? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what my next uh, loser move is going to be. Terrorist. I'm thinking heroin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe some kind of bizarre fast food shooting spree or something <laughs> like that. I, 
uh, I don't want to confine myself. I want to leave my options open. That's true. <laughs> and yet you keep your dream alive. That, yeah, of the oh, rodeo right. astronaut. Rodeo astronaut. Every now and then it's So how will she inside. top you? I don't know. I'm sure her and her team are hard at work. <laughs> <laughs> as we speak, plotting their next loser ask move. <laughs> Haunted is uh, Poe's uh, new CD, and uh, we're going to hear a song off it that has Mark and your father on it? Or? No, no, no. It's actually just Mark on that one. That okay. was just a crazy remix that we did. But you wanted Mark. to mention With your something. father's voice. No, no, no. The, my father's voice is kind of all through the album because... Um, he died in 1993, and later I found these cassettes of him. And, you know, one was a letter that he was actually speaking into a tape recorder to his children, which is very strange because after somebody dies, to press play on a tape recorder, and the first thing he says is, well, you know, it's nice talking like this. I'm going to do this more often. Me. What year? Like, Whoa. I mean, it was 90. He died in 93, and well, I found these in, I guess, um, nine, late 98, maybe, 99. And what year did he record them? Um, probably over the years over there were many I mean as far back as when we when we were like two years old mm -hmm. to that particular thing was probably in about 88 what were the messages he was giving you well it, it was it was incredible actually because the tapes had so many different different tones like he was very much the quintessential teacher slash critic but it was very hard to connect with him intimately he could always tell you what to do mm. but he couldn't really, in some ways, relate to you. So there was one that was a speech that he'd given when he was a teacher that was just quintessentially him, you know? Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful idea, mm. but it doesn't work. Mm. You know, like that kind of a dominating voice, which was definitely something that lingered in my head, and it sometimes was paralyzing. So, you know, I discovered that by listening to him over and over again, I could locate his voice in my psyche and distinguish it from my own, which allowed me to kind of decide what I wanted to keep. And ultimately, you know, the hardest tape to listen to was a tape um, that where he said all the beautiful things, where he says, you know, I'm proud of you, I miss you, I love you. And those were not words that I heard a lot from him growing up. And mm -hmm. was he was he abroad when he was doing these tapes? No, he was actually back, in this country. Or? No, he actually never sent that one. That's what's so crazy about it. It was sort of like a, discovering something that... But were your parents divorced at yeah, the time? Yeah, they were divorced. And he was going to or had sent many of these tapes back to you wherever you were at the time. No. He never sent them. No, I mean, I, he, he may, I never got a tape from him. I think Mark did get one letter. But in, it wasn't something he did all the time. It wasn't like... An, he taped some random things. Like there were some moments when it was just a family hanging out in a car... In when we were two to four and he's speaking to us and like I said there was a speech there's a letter but it wasn't as though there were thousands of these things and it wasn't a habit of his I mean I didn't receive How'd cassettes in him? the mail it was strange actually because I had a I actually had a dream that he which is which is bizarre like if someone's passed away that you're close to and you have a dream about them it's kind of disturbing because I mean, my dad in particular had, had been sick for about a year and a half and we took care of him. So all these conflicting emotions come back. Number one, it's like, uh, you're dead. I went through that. I don't want to go through that again. You know, okay, but if you're healthy, maybe I'm glad you're alive. And he said, you're forgetting my voice, mm. right? And I, it was one of those dreams, like I couldn't shake it for like three weeks. And the only thing I figured I could do was go out to the storage facility that my brother and I had rented to keep the rest of his belongings and just started rifling through his stuff. I mean, old letters. I, I discovered a lot of things about him, about his past, and, and with a degree of objectivity. You know, I, I was like discovering the life of a person and not just my father, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, which was incredible. Um, and I found, you know, ultimately these cassettes. And I took them, and it was funny because I was sitting down to make this album after touring for two and a half years, going, okay, where do I begin? And that's where I needed to start, you know? I mean, there's lots of things, oh, capitalize on your fan base, you know, where are the hits? Like, of course that stuff's gonna come in, and I took a long time making the record, but I don't regret it for one minute, you know, because it, I, I followed that voice, you know, and it did liberate me Have to we understand him. No, we're not gonna hear that, though, on this song. No, you won't. Okay. All right. This one is Mark and I. All right, well, now I think, uh, you wanna hear it? You wanna take a call and hear the song? How do you wanna do it? Whatever you say. All right, well, let's take a call because right. okay. uh, then. Because that's a bit much. I mean, come on. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of call. <laughs> that's a lot of call. I mean, <laughs> we miss her. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> Still an OD. Maria? Yes, hi. You're 21? Yes. I'm What's 20, up? I'm 21, and I'm a virgin by choice. 
And um, I've been in a mysterious relationship for like a year now. Mm-hmm. And my boyfriend and I, I think I'm ready for sex now. I see. And I've tried to Hold have on, I'll uh, alert the media. <laughs> <laughs> you are the media, oh, Adam. yeah, I forgot. Local authorities. That's <laughs> right. Go ahead. 21. Yes, I'm ready for sex now. and But I've tried, but I, don't, I never get the urge. You know, I just, when I see him, when I'm like kissing him, whatever, I just never feel wet or, and, you know... I never feel the urge of like just having sex. I just well, one of the things that shuts people down is some sort of sexual trauma in childhood. Anything like that happened to you? No. Because Nothing. Because sort of two, one of two trajectories people get sent off in. Either they become hypersexual or under undersexual. Maybe because I I mean I I know I used to watch like porno movies. How old were you? When I watch those, I get wet. How old were you when you you weren't a little kid or something when you saw? No, no, of porno. course not. Um, this is like eighteen. I started then. Mm-hmm. How old are you now? I'm 21 now. 21. Yeah. Um, how's your dad? You get along with him? Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> he is? You sound ambivalent. <laughs> really? He's all right, you know. It's always a bad answer. I don't know why, but when... <laughs> it wouldn't, yeah, right. it wouldn't, was, I mean, he wasn't like the perfect, you know? But yeah, I know. Good. He yeah. talked you out every once in a while. He was cool. <laughs> but he never, you know, not, not nothing crazy like that. I and see. Are you maybe just not into this boyfriend? No, maybe. I mean, I think, I, I mean, he's really cool. I like him a lot. Your boyfriend? Yes. No. We've been together for a year now. And I think, I mean, it's time for us to have sex. Yeah, you just yeah. kind of really cool. You don't uh, sound that into it. You no. sound like you're still talking about your dad. Yeah. <laughs> we don't think you're into this guy. I don't know. I hope I hope that's the reason, because I feel there's something wrong with me. Well, you're able to be aroused by movies and things, right? I know, so it's but not like I mean, this, this is the second guy the same thing has been happening to. Is All he pressuring you to have sex? Is he saying, hey, we need to have sex now? I feel I need to have sex now because I'm growing older, and I don't want my stuff to close up. So we have a definitive answer to that question. Are you, are, are you afraid to have sex? I don't know. I don't think I'm afraid to have sex. It's just painful. Are you on medication? No, I'm not. Wait, Maria, what's, what's, hold on. What's painful? Yeah, what's when, painful? When he tries to come in, it's so hard, and I'm very dry. And it's so painful, I just push him off. Because you're not aroused. Yeah. yeah. But one thing you don't have to worry about, it's not going to seal up, Okay. <laughs> You're not going to close up. It's not going to happen. Okay. I don't know. I think my... I was going to say my ass closed up, but no, you're right. You just I lost just in the hair. Earlier. That's right. I used it earlier today. Yeah. Uh, you really don't, I don't know really if this is good advice, like but why don't you get together with your boyfriend and... Well, no, 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 because watch, you're watch probably not... Yeah, watch a movie. We kind of keep doing that every time, you know? No, I know, but maybe it'll... Till maybe you, it'll you get going. Yeah, maybe it'll get you going, and then it, you'll feel more comfortable, and you'll remember, you know, a gratifying experience and be turned on the next time you see him. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll try that. Is okay. your family religious? Yes, very. Mm. So what what yes. religion? Re- Muslims. Muslims. How do Muslims feel about sex? Of course they don't like it, you know? I'm not supposed <laughs> to. I mean, I grew up not, like, not... Being allowed to have sex, That's you know, crazy. even the so fact that, that I want to have sex to do right now it. is just because you know I've been with him for a year and he's like, you know what, well, let's let's start. So you're feeling guilty and, and yeah, yeah, I feel kind of yeah that okay, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but you know because of you kind of thing, you know, yeah, I have right. this whole yeah. guilt in me. All mm. right, baby, you you got a lot of a uh, lot of ambivalent feelings going on. A lot here. of stuff, and it doesn't seem like you're much in love with this guy. How old is he? He's just a year older than I am, 22. I see. He really doesn't sound like Prince Charming to me. <laughs> or to you. I mean, he's all right. Yeah. All right. But all right is not you're, you're, right all right. At 21, you're supposed to still have some sort of bubble that hasn't been burst yet about <laughs> males. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 fun- that girls my age are just like uh, yeah. loving sex and, you know, all right. it's a big thing. Okay, listen. Uh, watch some porn, have a few wine coolers, and get it over with, would you? And don't get pregnant because you're moving on from this guy. Okay. I see. Uh, I see bigger and better things for you. All right. Marginally, but still <laughs> bigger and better. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, oh, baby. You you out of the house? Yeah. You, you live on your own. Yeah, I'm well, not sure. I'm on campus. You live well, on that's good, on campus. Yeah. In a refrigerator box, or you actually <laughs> live in housing? No, in the housing. In the really? House. Yeah. Four year university. I'm a third year. What school? Rutgers University. Rutgers. Right. Wow. All right, mm-hmm. baby. I was all wrong about you. <laughs> all right. All right, Good luck. Yeah, all right. She she just didn't, have fun. Uh, so there's certain people that, and we talk to them every night, don't we? Uh, actually, it's the vast majority <laughs> of our callers. They act like they're uh, aliens or drop down on the planet <laughs> trying to sort of assimilate and find yeah. their way. Confused. They they're like, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what's going on. My <laughs> teacher, he gives me the stink eye. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Should I go? <laughs> I might I might just make him my pants. Is that okay? <laughs> when someone honks and they're behind you, 
should you move? <laughs> what do they mean? You know, it's like, I'm like, I, I don't know how we can infuse that much knowledge into somebody in three minutes. Yeah. I just say, uh, you know, maybe they're, I, 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 but you know what the scary part is? I think they're all much happier than I am. Oh, sure. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's, <laughs> until I realized my dream. <laughs> exactly. Paul, you know what that dream is? I thought it was the rodeo astronaut. That's what it is. I don't right. forget these things. We will uh, hear something off uh, Poe's uh, new CD, Haunted. Brother Mark uh, on this one, too. You queued up there, Anderson? This is called Hey Pretty. Carrie suggested we go for a drive in her new two-door BMW coupe. In the parking lot, we slipped into her bucket seats. Kiri took over from there. At nearly 90 miles per hour, she zipped us up to that windy edge known to some as Mulholland, a sinuous road running the ridge of the Santa Monica Mountains, where she then proceeded to pump her vehicle in and out of turns, sometimes dropping down to 50 miles per hour, only to immediately gun it back up to 90 again. Fast, slow, fast, fast, slow. Sometimes a wide turn, sometimes a quick one. She preferred the tighter ones, the sharp, controlled jerk, swinging left to right before driving back to the right, only so she could do it all over again. Until after enough speed and enough wind and more distance than I'd been prepared to expect, taking me to parts of the city I rarely think of and never visit, I heard her say, Hey, pretty, don't you want remember the inane things I started babbling about then. I know it didn't really matter. She wasn't listening. She just yanked up on the emergency brake, dropped her seat back, and told me to lie on top of her, on top of those leather pants of hers, her hands immediately guiding mine over those soft, slightly oily folds, positioning my fingers on the shiny metal tab, small and round like a tear, then murmuring a murmur so inaudible that even though I could feel her lips tremble against my ear, she seemed far, far away. Pinch it, she said, which I did, lightly, until she also said pull it, which I also did, gently parting the teeth, one at a time, down under and beneath, the longest unzipping of my life. never even kissed or looked into each other's eyes. Our lips just trespassed on those inner labyrinths hidden deep within our ears, filled them with the private music of wicked words, hers in many languages, mine in the off color of my only tongue. Too bad dark languages rarely survive. <laughs> Something from Poe and uh, Brother Mark uh, off of Haunted. You, you, which you is just asleep there? I was listening. <laughs> I was just listening to that song. Oh. I was very uh, mesmerized by the whole thing. <laughs> I was thinking the whole time this would be great in a movie. Yeah. Just uh, seemed I right. think it kind of would be. It's true. Yeah, especially, uh, well, coincidentally. The driving yeah, scene. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're making a movie, coincidentally. Uh, I'm making a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, but there's no room for art in this movie. It's going to be a money Pure <laughs> It's about a boy who wants to be the first uh, rodeo uh, <laughs> astronaut. astronaut. Yeah. I think that's art. We'll uh, take ourselves a little I break. Move. Oh, coffee and donuts, maybe. The movie. Oh, you remember right. that? Yeah. yeah. You were that's supposed right. to do that for us. You know, I never <laughs> forgot it. I still... Well, I, obviously I we haven't. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, well, then there's still time. Good. I'll work on it. We'll uh, hammer out some of the beats during the break, and then we'll be back. Okay. 
Love line. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. It's Chino and, and Stefan from Deft Homes, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. <laughs> 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 All right, baby. Drew, <laughs> stop talking to the guests. Tell me secrets, okay? I understand. All right. Poe is our uh, guest tonight. Haunted's the name of the uh, CD. Mark C. Danielewski, not bad. Damn, you're good. Is uh, her brother, who's uh, always with her and on the uh, CD as well, and also... Uh, Author of the book House of Leaves, which is uh, thick, but uh, yeah, some of the pages don't have too many words on it. And I just saw a picture. <laughs> oh, so, so you're in, Adam. I think it's something uh, that could be got, uh, gotten through by uh, a lot of our uh, Love Line uh, listeners and perhaps even some of the callers. All right, so shall we hop back to the phones Let's and uh, see if we can sort out the Do world's we have to problems? Hop? We'll march back to the phones. Layla? Hi. <laughs> hey, Layla. you're 15. What's up? Yeah, my mom's like a generally healthy person, but she's 45 and she's pregnant. And I want to know what are the dangers of having a kid at that age? You mm. could get neglected. <laughs> yeah. Not, likely, not really yeah. not really much of anything to her. Really? Uh, there's increased risk of uh, Down syndrome, that sort of thing, and birth okay. defects, but that's it. All right, thanks. I mean, this day and age, it's a safe thing to do. Basically. What do they do? Give them a few uh, extra amniocentesis is, is, yeah. or something? They check them. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have two sisters. How old are they? Uh, they're 13 and 12. Why, after 12 years, is she interested in having a child? I have no clue whatsoever. <laughs> no. Did your mom remarry? Uh, no. My parents have been married for 19 years. Oh, so they're still married? Yeah. Well, that's kind of nice. How do, it, nice. How do you feel about it? I mean, I... I think it's great. My mom's happy, you know. I, I really don't mind it. Sounds a little goofy to me. Really? Yeah. It's just, it uh, it normally does sound goofy, but let parents have been together for 19 no, years. No, just uh, it, to me it means something. Like, like the, the marriage is going down, they're going to try to salvage it with this well, or something. Maybe, maybe it wasn't planned. Well, yeah, my parents had their like fights along the way. And oh. then, you know, they just came to me in February with this. So I was like, oh, okay, wow, all right. Yeah, for, and let me tell you something. <laughs> 45 and having another kid it's like that is phew. really that is bad times bad times all right well all right. don't freak her yeah. out just you, terms you of the energy a play toy. Yeah, yeah yeah you ever tried to play with a two-month-old yeah i kick him around the yeah. house a little bit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i get a little dirty i hold him <laughs> off oh, i know how to handle a kid are your sisters concerned um no as far as my sister's concerned they really don't care as long as my mom's doing okay they're fine with it all right yeah. They really don't express their concerns. Well, at 12, it's a little difficult to really abstract these kinds of things. Yeah. They take it much more at face value. Uh, Dustin? Yes? You're 19? Yes. What's up? <laughs> Not much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to be on the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. Okay, well, um, my girlfriend, like, after she's done giving me a blowjob and, like, I come in her mouth, she tries to kiss me afterwards, and... Yeah, don't believe him. You mean immediately afterwards? Well, not immediately afterwards, but, like, shortly Good. after, yes. And that freaks you out? And, yeah, kind of. <laughs> have, you, have, you told, have, you told, <laughs> have you told her that? Yeah. And well, she's when you say so. shortly afterward, uh, what do you mean? Does she uh, take a trip to the bathroom, or is it before the bathroom break? No, it's just, like... I don't know, like a couple seconds after. I don't a couple know. seconds after. Can't you hold That's off? That's quick. I mean, That's I like a whole... bother timing. <laughs> you, you never bother timing? No. All right. Hey, Dustin? Yes? Yeah, kiss my ass. I don't like <laughs> Dustin. He's a jackass. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> I hope uh, hope your gums get pregnant, you idiot. <laughs> never bother timing. I don't need that kind of sass. I really don't. I'm in, uh, I'm in, I'm in no mood for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to tolerate no, it. No, right. no mood for Cirrus. No, yes, <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> getting service from 19 year olds in uh, Woodland Hills, the armpit of the valley. You've got dreams to nurture. That's right. Yeah, I gotta you're get, a busy I, man. I get you're... back to my training regimen. That's right. You're Jay- getting focused. Jason? Hi. You're 23. What's up? I uh, wanted to tell Poe and Mark I like them a lot. Oh, cool. And, and uh, I was wondering, Poe, are you going to be touring with anybody in particular? You know, there is a band we might go out with, but the problem is we don't know for sure yet, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you asked. I mean, we. I want to say, but we can't because we're still kind of, there's still another band and we're not totally sure. So I'd rather not when jinx you, it. When do you tour starting? Just check the website, p-o-e.com or the fan site, polishchick.com, which is even better. Polish chick? Uh-huh. Because I said in an interview once, I'm a Polish chick that sings. And so they made a website, which is really awesome. Like I, I found out that I was going to do Loveline on polishchick.com. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, before my label told me anything. Nice. So so if you, if you, if you check that out on the web, that will have the info immediately. We should know within about a week. Let me ask Jason. Jason, where are you calling from? Milwaukee. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Milwaukee, cool. And uh, might might you stop somewhere in uh, Milwaukee? We'll say yeah, yes. For the yeah, sake I of don't argument. know. Sure. I, anything's possible. All right. We Jason. will eventually. <laughs> check the uh, <laughs> check the polishchick dot com. All right. <laughs> can, I, can I say something else? Mm. Sure. Um, my I have a small scale website that mm-hmm. I'm going to be giving away uh, free post CDs on. Oh, cool. To promote. Yeah. Maybe I'll win. Yeah, I was wondering if I could say the website. Uh, Anderson, what do you think? He's asking very nicely. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. It's www.com. Oh, there you go. <laughs> F-O-R. All right. Cool. Good F-O-R. luck. F-O-R? I don't know what that is. I think it was just BS. I want to get his Jason. F-O-R, for president. I see. All right, we will uh, take our... Oh, I understand. Yeah, we would have done that math, by the way. Just like the bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, take a break. We'll be right back. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Mark Z. Danielewski is here. Also, uh, Poe is here tonight. Haunted is the name of Poe's uh, new CD. If you uh, go to uh, Poe, P-O-E.com, you can uh, find out uh, the uh, well, possible touring plans and things sure. like that. Well, here's something else uh, off the uh, CD. Uh, also, uh, House of Leaves is the name of the CD that Mark... Uh, the I'm CD, sorry, the, the book extended that... Mix. Uh, well, you guys, are, you guys are doing so much uh, cross-pollinating. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> I can't keep anything straight anymore. Uh, because uh, Mark is also found on the CD as well with uh, passages from the book. That's right, from a footnote. There we go. All right, so it wasn't too far off. James? Yeah, um, I've been listening since about Poor Man. I have to say... Adam, you're the best host the show has had. Most entertaining. Well, thanks. Were you 10 at the time? Um, nine, nine or 10. Nice. Wow. So uh, the show's had a lot of influence on me and helped me with a lot of stuff. Oh, so. cool. Good. Drew, you definitely do a service, and uh, no one ever thinks Anne. And Anne has to be thanked for all her work over the years. Producer Anne. Yeah. Thank Dump you, Anne. Dump that, would you, uh, <laughs> All right, go ahead. If and, she were um, here, she'd be graciously <laughs> attempting. That's right. I read House of Leaves a couple months ago, and I, I just noticed before you mentioned that uh, the songs, at least that one that you just played a few minutes ago, is pretty much right out of the book, and how you came up with that concept to do songs in the book. And I think, is the album kind of like almost, are there more like that to go along with the book? I, All the songs integrate with the book, you know, um, more in terms of image, like the five and a half minute hallway is a song. It's also a chapter in the book. But you, um, you don't need one to enjoy the other. Do no, you? you don't. They they're siblings. They live on their own. Do you know? But um, 
that's the only one that Mark actually reads on. And that was just a remix we kind of did at our house, um, I mean, my the, house. The way it worked was that while I was writing the thing, I was always listening to stuff that my sister was working on. And when I wrote the chapter on the five and a half minute hallway, she read it and then she took it into a completely different emotional direction. And then when I listened to her song, I, it sort of influenced me in the way the, the book was shaped. And so the book and the CD kept talking to each other. And so when we went on and the road... And he does things too. <laughs> it goes the we, other way too. Like he wrote some stuff into the book, you know, from ideas and song. Should no, we? absolutely. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but at the, you know, explain how the, we went on the, the tour... And yeah, we did it. We did a tour, believe it or not, of Borders bookstores and brought a DJ with me. And basically to spend the time and talk a little bit about how, you know, like how a certain song came about and then read passages from the book that it integrates with. And, you know, we just had the idea at that point to have to drop some verses out of some of these songs and have Mark do readings. And then, you know, basically we weren't getting any radio. And so I had the idea of recording him at my house and sent it to a friend in Portland, Oregon. And three weeks later, Mark was driving down the street and heard himself on K-Rock. Like, how did this happen? And that's kind of that's kind of how it ended up. And now we've stripped that mix onto the CD. Hey, James. Uh-huh. How'd you get hip to the book? Um, a friend of mine where I work had it. And, I mean, it's definitely, I've, there's nothing else like it. It's pretty, it's, it's incredible, but it's, it's some work. I know it took me like a week to read it. <laughs> That's quick. <laughs> Which is, you know, but it's a... Uh, it's a speed read, man. Yeah. It's pretty different, and it's... Um, so I know there are, like, some places where 25 pages took me, like, four hours to get through. Well, you got to turn it upside down and, and, you know, basically spin it around on a potter's wheel. Does that count as physical stuff. exercise? Yeah. If you're no. actually... It looks like you're uh, using... On roller the, blades? No. Still no. Not. <laughs> using the book as a steering wheel. But if you're you running it. stairs while you're doing it, it yeah, counts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, James. Yeah, thank you. It's It's genius. Thanks, James. So uh, have a good night. Take care of yourself. Bye. All right. Let's talk to Robert. Robert. Hey, how you doing? You're 20. What's up? Uh, I got a question. A friend of mine was having sex with a girl. Sure, a friend. He has a friend. <laughs> got it. All right. I believe him. Go <laughs> ahead. We don't think he sounds like somebody to be having sex? And his condom ripped. Yes. So he was wondering on how long will it take to get tested and find something out. Mm. Well, it could be tested the next day, but it's six months for HIV. Why? Do you, does your friend suspect the girl may have had uh, HIV or any other diseases? He doesn't think it's HIV, but he thinks he's not sure about something else. So this is somebody he's never met before? Yeah, that's the whole point. All right, well, he could be checked for chlamydia and gonorrhea and non-gonococcal causes of STD, and herpes would show up in, eh, within 10 days usually. So. Within 10 days? Do they have a faster test for HIV now? Within 10 days. There are some, but, but the screening really, is the, the, the antibody test is still the gold standard. Hey, uh, Robert? Yeah. How are you doing, buddy? Dude, can you uh, call back in 20? Yeah, we'll call you back. All right? What was that? Hey, Robert? What was yeah. that? That's your kid's sister or something? Who? Whoever was on the other line? Lauren. Oh, that was Lauren? <laughs> oh, that was my kid's sister. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, my sister's name is Lauren. Hey, Robert, you're living in North Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah, you got to get out of there, buddy. Why is that? It's no place for a man to live. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in North Hollywood. That place a hell hole. Where are you? What streets yet? Um, near Arlita. No. Get, ah. out, get out of there. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Move now. Did you go to North Hollywood High or did you go to Poly? I went to Poly. No. Then I. <laughs> <laughs> then you transferred where? To Grant. No. Uh, all right. <laughs> Grant's not too bad. Really? Better in Polly. Grant's like what in Cena? Where's Grant's Cena? a hell of a lot better in Polly, isn't it, Robert? Oh hell yeah, better. All right, buddy. Easy on the weed, okay? A lot more army in. A lot more. I right, will get. You, <laughs> he can get. get have him get tested in a week if there's any concerns. You see what I had to grow up with? He was. Uh, that's the mayor of North Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> He's valid Victorian. He's uh, captain of the speech and debate club. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Command yeah. of language. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. You're uh, 15. What's up? Yeah, um, uh, I think my stepdad is cheating on my mom. Yeah. How do you figure? Um, just a lot of things. He, he, the person that I think His he's penis doing smelled it with weird is, the other night. Uh, <laughs> not like mom. No, but um, he Ew. He's doing it with um, I think so with his coworker, uh -huh. and um, she she always calls when my mom is gone, mm -hmm. like when um she's 
I have work and has other things to do that are previously scheduled. And I've heard some um, conversations that my stepdad's had with her and um, just like little things, and it sounds like they've got something going on. Yeah. And do you like your stepdad? No. I hate him. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I want him out of the house. And so this is a good excuse, I guess. Why do you want him out of the house? Because he's a jerk. What does he do? Hold on. Let me write that down. Yeah. yeah. What's he do? He's um, verbally abusive, and I don't know, over the past few years, um, my mom married him when I was like seven. Yeah. yeah. When I was seven, and at first he kind of stayed out of my life, but recently he's been like punishing me like really extremely harshly, and uh, we just... What kind of punishment for what kind of crime? Um, one of my friends, I smoked a cigarette, just one cigarette, because I used to smoke, mm-hmm. and um, with one of my friends, I know I'm not allowed to see him anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. But you, you understand, and, and, um, and again, I don't want to sound like Pops Corolla, but uh, parents, or even step-parents, uh, disciplining their kids is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, he shouldn't be... Shouldn't be bad. Well, I wouldn't mind if my mom was doing it, because I don't... You know, yeah. I, I know, but you know what? That's that's a load of crap. It really is. I mean, your dad is uh, God knows where. This guy married your mom. He stepped in. He tried to form a family, and it's like just because you guys don't have the same DNA, he can't talk to you. Mm. Meanwhile, he puts a roof over your head and food in your mouth. No, he he's like he has got like ang- anger management problems, and he'll just start. I don't know. Well, he, why don't you build your case carefully? Where is your real dad, by the way? Um. He's a drug dealer in Georgia. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he's a dynamite individual. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but, but this is the kind of guys that your mom picks. Um, no, she, she kind of had a life, well, a little bit. This guy, he's, he just never, I don't think he's ever had a beer in his entire life. Well, what, yeah, do you, what do you think of your real dad? Do you ever have any contact with him? Um, I, I talk to him like once every three months or so. And, and what do you think of him? How do you get along with him? Um, He's kind of cool, but no, he's he's not someone that I want to have any kind of serious relationship. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't I'm want a glad you're realistic. I don't hey. want a serious relationship with my parents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a casual flirtation, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, yeah just do a platonic, platonic with the parents. Sure. Is there anything about this stepdad that you like? Um, you had any good times with him? No, no. We we've all we've always had kind of like a weird relationship whenever like my mom's not home and I'm home and it's just me yeah, and him boy. Uh-huh. I suggest I suggest that if you're going to tell your mom about what he's been up to you have your case carefully built yeah Iron, ironclad I, I I gotta tell you this guy sounds, this guy sounds it. the kind of guy who could have you killed he could uh, <laughs> cut the brakes on your 10 speed or something well, certainly you know, he, could slime, he could slime his way out of almost anything other, other than some super incriminating like a tape recording of his ba- of his uh let me let me give you, uh, you photos, all just okay. a, photos just a, a little window into my uh, personal life here. I've had uh, I've had two step parents and uh, eh, they're all right. Mm-hmm. Step dad was better. Step mom was a pain in the ass when I was growing up. You didn't you didn't talk about her quite so so uh, so clemently for having disciplined you. Well, she by, didn't by really putting discipline you out in the garage me. In the well, doghouse. I was more uh, you know banished to the garage, but I wasn't really uh, yeah. disciplined. But it, you know it's weird. When you have this step parent that you don't know that well and you don't like that well, and Lord knows they ain't nuts about you because you're just that pain in the ass from the last relationship. I mean, yeah. you're a physical. They want to be in love and with the right. person that they're with, and you got the, hey yo. You're, you're like the <laughs> physical representation of the last bitch dad was with, yeah. <laughs> and and vice versa when the step dad is around. Yeah. And and so you're not their problem, and and you don't like them, and they don't really like you, and and. And then when you're left alone in the house with them, you're kind of walking around this house with somebody that's a little weird. Like they don't, they don't. Yeah, you don't know who they are, and, and they you're don't expect it to be like. Each one of you wants the other just to clear out, basically. <laughs> uh, it, it's not great, but I can tell you a couple of things we get on this show, which is a lot of guys who have really bad biological dads, then stepdad comes in, and all the energy that should have gone toward real a-hole biological dad gets channeled towards stepdad you're not my boss man you know my, you know yeah. nobody really tell me what care. yeah meanwhile real dad's uh peddling dime bags in some park in georgia right you, you know what i mean yep. this is this is the guy you should have your beef with stepdad may not it's be true. a great guy but at least he's there at least he's present and at least he's trying to create some form of some sense of family i mean it seems difficult but one good approach is just to find out more about your step parent. Just ask questions. Mm. I mean, the more you know about them, the less sort of of a screen they're going to be to project all those awful mm. garbage on. So just find out, who, you know, really who they are. Yeah, then you frame them and bust them. Absolutely. For banging their secretary. 
I uh, suggest Perfect. just the opposite, which is, uh, I know Mark, Mark's right on paper, but my thing is just, just lay low. Just go to high school. Just get out. Go play sports afterward. Hang out at your friend's house. Just stay out of this guy's crosshairs. Just don't don't get on his bad side. Stay. If he's got rage or anger management problems, stay out of the guy's face. Just go to your room, do your homework, and get up in the morning. Go to go to school, and don't come home till six o'clock at night. And make sure the cameras are running and the tape right. Orders. You ride it out a few years, then you go far away to college somewhere, and you're out. If that's you never the case, though, with it. find some really good friends. Oh yeah, you know? definitely. And but here's the other thing and anyone, about anyone anyone that you can build like a trusting relationship with, even if they're older, you know. Would be cool. The, the other thing about step parents is, unlike real parents, once you're out of the house, you're done with them. Like, they're not your real parents anymore. That's true. Like, you'll never have to talk to them again. So, you make it to 18, you go off to college somewhere, you'll never Unless talk to the guy again. they hunt you down, say. Could happen. And that, that, that was you hunting your mom down. Human prey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jessica? More yeah. likely. You're 24. What's up? Um, well, um, just recently, a couple Can weeks ago. Can I just ago, say, I always love the way that you tell people how old they are. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, definitively, Jessica, you're 24. You know, it's like a, that's their question. I it's a rhythm, <laughs> and uh, the less thinking I have to do, the better on the show. But no, I realize nice. when I'm, you know, when you're listening to if the show. If I didn't show, know how old I was, I would call here. Let me say something. <laughs> how dare you, by the way, barge into my studio <laughs> after two long years and a love affair that ended without so much as a phone call <laughs> or an uh, email. No, here's here's what I'm gonna say. This this is a, a a syndicated radio show, and on most syndicated radio shows, they tell you where the caller's from, but right. not how old they are. And where they're from is just a bit of a jack off to me. It's so <laughs> everyone knows you're widely syndicated. Right. But we don't get into that because it doesn't really matter to us. Doesn't tell you, you much. You, yeah. you have problems, and uh, they're gonna be the same as they are on the east as they are on the west coast. But to age, I'm always curious when I listen to other shows how old this person is because if they're pregnant or their boyfriend, gave, they lost their virginity or whatever it is. Good point. Big difference between 14 and 24. Yep. Jessica? You're 24. Uh -huh. You're right. 24. What's up? <laughs> okay. The reason I'm calling is that just recently, I've been married to my husband for five years, and just recently, um, a couple weeks ago, my husband told me that he had an affair um, Two years. It wasn't a fair. It was like a one night stand type thing. Two years ago, mm -hmm. and I really don't know why he told me out. That's of what we got to figure out. Why did he tell you this? More trouble, more uh, troubling than the affair itself is why, why he, told he told you. you. Yeah. Right. In, in other words, but, well, but it, it, out either. of the blue, it's kind of you know I told him he's either a real idiot or he's doing something right now. Exactly. Well, well if he's doing She's something, clever, I, think. I don't know if he's doing something right now. I don't know why he's bringing up the past he, affair. He's, he's building up to the fact that, in fact, they've been together since that affair, or they've been. Well, you together. think he's trying to drop a bomb? He's getting ready to drop a bomb here. Um, I don't know. You know, he's he kind of has a problem telling the truth a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if there's something else because he always tells me, "Oh, this is the only thing," you know, whatever. And so I just don't pal. know if he's, you know. Well, what other lies have you caught him in? Well, let's see. Um, the fact that well, before we were date, when we were just dating, before we were married, he uh, forgot to inform me that he was married before. But I thought, well, you know, I was kind of stupid. I thought a minor well, detail. Th yeah, you know. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I thought, well, maybe you know, whatever. He just thought that. Um, well, listen, you don't have to rationalize I every move. Understand. You were anyway, dumb, and he's an idiot. Go ahead. Right. So anyway, and then just recently, I found out he was communi communicating with this um, ex, and supposedly there was maybe some kid that might be um, oh. be his, might not be. He signed off on oh, papers. Boy. Oh. So that was like a few months ago, and then now this. You've yeah. been with him five years. Uh, well, actually, I've been a long, that's how long I've been married, almost five years. What, right. el what else have you been telling you? What else have you been up to? Uh, well, and then this. That Is there anything weird with his job? Is he doing drugs or alcohol? No, nothing like that. He doesn't lie about his work or money? or. No. How's your sex life? Oh, it it was fine. Mm -hmm. Was that's until? That's until he told well, me. Well, I mean, until this. I, that's it. he's not yeah. here anymore. <laughs> I kicked him out, and I've already filed for a divorce. I just was wondering why. Whoa. <laughs> she moves fast. Rock and roll. Do you have wow. kids? Do you have kids? No kids. Oh, oh good. Good. Uh -huh. good. That is so good. Why don't you have kids? Is something wrong with your tubes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 24 and I'm in law school, so. Uh, okay. Let's see. There you go. Wait, wait, wait. Don't hang up. I'm not going to hang up, but here's an example of uh, of someone who's not a victim. <laughs> right. No, that's right. true. She made a mistake. 
she uh, was blinded by love. She got hooked up with the wrong guy. She realized this guy was a sociopath. Well, he tells She's smart enough yeah. not to start a family with this guy. Right. He screwed up more than once, and she booted him out, and you can move on with your life now. Right. Well, I have another question also. Do you think I need to have some kind of counseling to just... I, I think it'd be a good idea for, for a couple of reasons. One is to sort of help sort of close get some closure on what's going on here. Secondly, to figure out what it is that attracts you to someone like this. And thirdly, help well, I you... I think s- I was just kind of young. Then. No, no. Well, there are a lot of young people, and they don't all pick jerk-offs yeah, like this. Yeah, but I, I'll... There's, there's something to that. This, there, this guy some. wasn't beating her uh, There's and something to it, but... What, and what, is, what does he do? Excuse Cop. me. What does he do? What does he... What's his job? Yeah. yeah. Um, he, um, Cop? He works at a recruiting firm. Recruiting for what? Uh, for to help people, like, kind of like a headhunter type job. Okay. And, and the other thing Same is thing why, exactly. why you've had difficulty seeing reality on reality's terms. Okay. What, what, what's your denial about and why you don't see things more clearly before they come and really hit you between the eyes? How did he react when you, when you kicked him out? Well, that was kind of another weird part. He's just kind of like, I mean, like 20 minutes after he told me, he's all like, well, uh, we need to um, decide how we're going to split up things. And, you know, oh, see, right. see, he was yeah. he wasn't yeah. ready to go. Drew's right. Yeah, yeah he, he he's had something going on. Yeah, I mean, this, he's this ask, been, asking this, for an out. This has been going on for a while. Yeah. I, yeah. I just don't know if something's going on or. Yes, yeah, something's going on. Yeah, something's going on. Something's going on, and that you got to you, you need therapy to figure out why you have difficulty seeing people for who they really are. And you are. should be happy that yes, you're free. Yes. You're in law school. You're smart. You're you got your whole future. Relatively, yes, <laughs> yeah. And and listen, this guy's a sociopath. He really is. And and when sociopaths do things that seem noble, like, oh no way! I just want to tell you, it was eating at my conscience. Yeah. Oh, that's this the This guy worst. doesn't have a soul. Yeah. You no, know, he's she's waiting out in the car. Yeah. For Christ's sake. Right. Yeah. She's at some uh, motel somewhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he wanted out, and the fact that he didn't argue with you or anything—he's like, "Pow, how are we going to end this?" He wanted out too. Yeah. Fine. Well, that's why I brought Good. it up. You're and both out. No and kids. he's manipulating her into thinking that that she should be responsible for the, his confession. Oh yeah, please. Right. Yeah. This is, um, you know, it's a guy who wants to get fired, so he goes in the boss's uh, office, takes a cramp in his desk drawer, <laughs> <laughs> and then then he's like, "Well, I got fired." <laughs> <laughs> get fired. Well, that's it in for me. Yes, yeah. right. man. Yeah, do the work of Never five guys. Never liked me, Jared. Yeah. You're 23? Yes, how you guys doing? Good. Uh, I just had a question. Um, one of my good friends just overdosed on um, ecstasy and alcohol. What does that mean? Days ago. What do you mean overdosed? Uh, he's dead. He o- on ecstasy and alcohol. That's a rare... And a little bit... Uh, the, the toxicology uh, report, is that what it's called? Yeah. It hasn't come back yet. Yeah. That. I bet there's more than just ecstasy and alcohol. Because he's an avid ecstasy and alcohol. And, and a, yeah. a little bit well, of as we learned a few weeks back when we did our ecstasy show, you don't know what you're getting. Really? Yeah, but ecstasy, you can die from ecstasy. What, what were the sin? The well, you weren't, you're saying you weren't five seconds ago. I, it's, it's you can. It's unlikely. Be, I, yeah, I, I, but wouldn't it be more likely you got something else? No, it's more like you took something else. Mm. Like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The stuff that you're getting, that being masquerading as ecstasy, is not going to kill you. How hmm. long does it take to get a toxicology report? I don't know offhand, but, but it, I'm sure it'll be a few weeks. But listen, uh, well, how how did it go down? Did he get have seizures or what what happened? I'm really really not sure. Okay, yeah. all right. I I, w- I would predict that e- either this is an alcohol overdose just made worse by ecstasy, or he took something else also. You can overdose on alcohol. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I it, mean, you can die of alcohol. Let overdose. me ask you a uh, ecstasy and uh, coke related uh, alcohol question. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not uh, this, this is not cocaine though. I know. Yeah. This is uh you know this is for me this uh, for later. <laughs> for later. Right. Yeah. Not, not everything's for a call. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> We're going to do some uh, me, Mark, and uh, Paul are going to do some bone. Don't let him do those hey, mushrooms. He yeah, gets we weird. Yeah, we just want to know. Wigan. No, I, I, I'm not as good a driver on those mm-hmm. mushrooms. But I'm better on coke, <laughs> but I'm, I'm worse on mushrooms. But Can you drive us home? Yeah. Cool. You guys any right? <laughs> yeah. No problem. Um, you know, you do coke, you can drink, right? Yeah. And you can drink all night. But as far as your body goes, as far as being poisoned by alcohol... doesn't change. In fact, cocaethylene is formed by the alcohol and the cocaine together, and the cocaethylene is cardiac toxic effects. So and the so point is, is Coke Campbell's alcohol is a, is a pretty deadly combination. You do Coke, you start drinking twice as much as you normally would because you're not really feeling the effects, and, and you end up con- poisoning yourself from alcohol. And you have a toxic reaction from the combination of the cocaine and the alcohol. Right now, with X, doesn't could you it. get high and just drink more and not really feel it too? Potentially, yeah, because of the speed oh. quality. So maybe there yeah. was some yeah. alcohol poisoning maybe. here. Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, anyway, uh, Jared's not going to know until he gets a toxicology That's report. That's right. Or I, I could tell him more if you can find out more about what happened, what what the 
what it looked like when he was dying. Well, I could tell you more Jared, about what was happening. Yeah. Wh uh, what are you worried about? I mean, well, I mean, I, I'm I, sorry I, he's dead, but because we used to party together, and I would do the same thing. Oh like well, let it. Alcohol. Well, let it be known you can die. Sure, uh, but I, what isn't ecstasy more long-term effects like? Yes. Brain, yes, it is. Yes, brain. it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But but fi find out exactly what it looked like. Did he have seizures? Did he have hyperthermia? Did he go unconscious? Was he agitated? Yeah. And that, that information, I can help sort of make, now, theorize has, what happened. Has, a, like, a person ever died of an ecstasy overdose by itself? Yes. Okay. See, I wasn't aware of that. But that's unusual. It's usually through this malignant hyperthermia. Syndrome. Hey, Jared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are, are you scared straight now? Um. No. Yeah, well. Sort of. Yeah. He Wait till another friend he dies. Just, he just died. That's all. Uh, I think he was more of an avid. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Himself, yeah. You know. Weak, weak willed. We yeah. know the type. Yeah. Poser. Think Lightweight. It, <laughs> Jared, think about the insanity. <laughs> the insanity right. of your thinking. The insanity right. of what you're thinking right now. I know. Just, Jared, just step back a couple your, feet. Your friend just died, and now you're calling for sort of tips just to make sure. <laughs> he doesn't okay happen to you. Okay you know. for you to go on and carry out his work. Yeah. He's just a little too much of a heavyweight. But uh, if, if I, I, as I've got it right now, you, you can't, you cannot judge these things. Yeah. All right, buddy. Why, right, Jared? You really, you really got to take a look in the mirror now. You understand? I hear you. I mean, right. you're, you're really, you're called to pick our brain to find out whether it was okay for you to keep going. Because I never heard of such a thing. Before. I know, but you're yeah. still doing it. As and, I'm telling and, you, and you're I'm, doing it. And I'm telling you, it happens. All right. It happens all the time. Okay. But really, look into your addiction, please. Would you? All right. Good time, sir. Yeah. yeah. All right, buddy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> He doesn't want to believe that. Jesus Christ. Uh, listen, I don't, you know, I really respect the guy who's got a problem and just can admit it. Yeah. I'm sort of okay with that. Yeah. I'm not going to pass too much uh, judgment on a guy who says, look, I'm into these drugs and I'm 23 and I'm sorry, but I'm right. young and I'm stupid and I got a boner <laughs> and I'm going to do them for another yeah. few years and uh, I'm willing to take that responsibility. This guy was picking our brain to find out whether it was okay if he kept doing it. No, he was figuring out from what we said how to rationalize. Yeah. His own behavior. Not whether he continue, not what he would do, but how to rationalize what it is he does. How to make sense yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was uh, hell bent on going forward oh, and just oh, yeah. uh, wanted to know if the guy got hold of something bad or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's nice. I'm glad we could be a part of that. You guys right. offer a good service. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Call the <All> right. <laughs> We should hand out clean syringes, too, Drew. <laughs> we'll uh, take ourselves a break. We'll be right back. Love line. Love line. 1 800 love 191. Um, back in a minute. Hi, this is Matt Stone and Trey Parker from South Park and Baywatch. And you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yeah. Love Line. You know, uh, Matt Stone uh, of uh, Matt and Trey, South Park guys, uh, came over to my house to play basketball uh, two Saturdays ago, and the guy's got some game. Oh, yeah? I gotta tell you. Damn. Did he whoop you? No. No, because I got some game too. <laughs> but he he's you got some game. game. I'm always fact. always surprised when the uh, artistic types have some game. Huh. Very, I, You'd be I really surprised. That. They're out there. They are. Yeah. I'm an athlete. Are you? I'll kick your. Really? What was, what was your sport? Gymnastics, actually. Started <laughs> in gymnastics. That. That's right. We knew that. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You're rangy for a gymnast. It, well, I grew six inches in one summer when I quit. Really? It hurt. I mean, it was painful. I came back. I, I've never been the same since. Like, I trip over things. <laughs> it's really sad. Really? Six inches in, in one, one summer? In one summer. I went from the little gymnast to, like, the tall, gangly thing. Yeah. When yeah. the hell were you? Uh, 13. Yeah. Wow. And then that was it? Did you keep growing? No, what, no, what no. no I couldn't. I mean, I... What are you like? <laughs> no, I mean, growing-wise. <laughs> no way. I mean, you're like you're like 5'11"? I actually or? grew two inches after the age of 21. Huh. That's Which wild. is weird. It's I very just weird. Had yeah. a growth spurt and... Huh. That was kind of strange. You're, you're close but I'm to five six. ten. Really? Yeah. yeah. Good times. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like a small woman, though. Makes my penis seem big. <laughs> I've said that many a time. You've always said that. All yeah. things being relative. <laughs> so who's this, how small is the smallest woman that you've gone out with? Three inches. And how big did you feel then? Um, not big enough. <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know if I've, I've never really, I'm you know, worried about him. Uh, what, what you want and what you get, two different things, you know. I don't mind petite, though. Right. I, I don't mind that. 
I just never had any uh, petite girlfriends. I date um, uh, 300 plus. <laughs> <laughs> but I want petite. But petite to me is, two, you know, 250, 245. <laughs> yeah. In the two range. Yeah. That's tiny. Yeah, medium twos. Uh, Anthony? Yes. You're 18? <laughs> yes. How's what? it going, Adam and Dr. Go- Drew? Good. How are you doing? Great. Um, on the subject of petite women, <laughs> um, well, um, last. It would have been Friday. Uh huh. Um, not to mention older woman, but um, I guess so. Uh, we were just having intercourse, and uh, my brother always said, uh, if you wanna, um, if you wanna learn sex, um, have sex with an older woman, and she'll tear you up in bed. And I think that's what happened. Yeah, she tore you up. How old is she? Well, it's well compared to me, she's 25. Yeah. And uh, I'm 18. Yep, that geezer showed you a few new tricks. <laughs> yeah, you, um, unlike these 17 and 18 year olds. <laughs> What's your older brother's name, Kurt? Kurt? <laughs> no, it'd, it'd be uh, Nicholas. Yeah, that's no name for an older brother. Yeah. You can call him Nick. Yeah, it's n- usually call him Nick. An older brother should be named Kurt. <laughs> All right, listen, let's get to the name. Let's stay with the problem. What yeah, is what is Nick, your Nicholas? What's the question? Yeah, what is your answer? You, you're like a you savant. Just to bro- broadcast. <laughs> definitely Nicholas. Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, yeah, that's a little. That's a little guy who follows you around. You got to tell him to go back home. Too, 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 too so the first thing you got to do is tell your brother. What is to the change question? his name? Kurt. <laughs> I don't Kurt. Well, you can call him Nick. You can call me Tony and stuff. Definitely Nick. Me. Nick. It, definitely. It works, it works all. What is the question? Well, my question is um. I got bruised pretty badly, and I'm wondering. I've um, I've been you, with different. Hold on, hold on. Did you bend it? I don't know. I've. You I must did, have. <laughs> did it stop working? Uh, no, no, no. We we had it again last night. So you I, have normal erectile function. You don't have pain with sex. No pain with intercourse. Um, it's when it gets erect, it's it's a little painful. Not not much because uh, I was thinking I was thinking did I break my penis? Y- yeah, you can tear the the sheath in there, but it, usually it will distort and the it won't get erections anymore. So you're probably fine. Just be easy, very easy. Um, take it slow. No more no more uh, coming down hard on the penis. Yeah, you spare that penis. Uh, yeah. I wonder if her name was Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's a good name for an older brother, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Guy's got a van, you know? <laughs> Kurt. Did you have any brothers? Turns you on to some weed, you know? Huh? Did you have no, any brothers? No, I, I didn't have any brothers. So this is your fantasy brother, is yeah, Kurt, with a, Kurt with a van. Van. He's going to turn you on to some weed. Yeah. You know, drive you around. Yeah. Show you the ropes. Yeah, like for your birthday, gets you a leather vest. <laughs> you think it's pretty cool. Does he play guitar? He, he tries. Right. He's not very good at it. Exactly. He yeah. tells you about the beaches in Baja. Lisa, right. what's going yeah, on? Made up stories about getting laid all the time. <laughs> Lisa. Yes. What's up? Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, my husband and I, um, we picked up two copies of House of Leaves and bought the post CD. And we read it together and listened to the CD, and it is phenomenal. It's just so great. We've been recommending it to everybody. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. That's awesome. And that's you. it. I have no problems. (laughs) Well, not anymore. Wow, that's so awesome. House of Leaves altered you, changed you. It's, it's, it's a great piece of literature. It's totally refreshing, something really new and, and different. And we, it, was, it was a blast reading that together. We got to discuss it and stuff. So it was really fun. Thank you. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Bye-bye. All right. You got to get some cable, though, right? No, we don't. We don't own cable at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You gotta get some TV in the house. <laughs> 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 that's the problem. Stay yeah. away from the no, cable. Stay away from the book. Nothing wrong no. with reading. Stand but back when, from the book. When you and your husband are breaking off into s- discussion groups and stuff, did you, you guys read it aloud? Don't all listen all to this guy. That's all I'm saying. What aloud? Did, did you, you read the book aloud to each other? Some parts of it, because you know, it just there was one part that I got really confused, especially in the maze, and so he had to explain it to me. And uh, we we went over a couple things together. It, a, a few times it threw me off a little bit, having to go back and forth within the pages and stuff. But it it was cool. It was still it was still you know definitely an experience. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Cool. Take care. Uh, of yourself. Adam, think how far that is from your your experience of your life. reality. Yeah. <laughs> Reading. 
Just reading, reading with, reading, with discussing, your girlfriend, and then reading to one another. Just what think. it might mean. Kurt in his van. Kurt in a <laughs> van. Imagine you reading book. and House of Leaves. <laughs> no way. You know what? You know what you read with Kurt in his van. He's got that uh, bumper sticker that says uh, "Gas, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free." And the slightly more updated version, the Coke, Toke, or Poke. <laughs> Nobody rides for free. Nice. He's just uh, he's just got his own philosophy, though. Don't kid yourself. He plays by his own have, rules. Made out of red. Any books. That's right. Come on, Adam. Let me Zen read you a little House of Leaves now. <laughs> no continuation school could hold Kurt down, boy. He had dreams. <laughs> dreams of going to the beach. Rodeo astronaut. All right. Well, let's uh, let's hear something from uh, Poe's uh, latest CD. How about that? Hold this one is called Control. Don't you mess with a little girl's dream. Cause she's lover to grow up me Surprise you to find that I'm laughing You thought that you'd find me in tears You thought I'd be crawling the walls Like a tiny mosquito and trembling in fear Well you may be king for the moment But I am a queen, understand And I got your pawns and your bishops and castles All inside the palm of my hand
cannot be all that there is to life because in our confrontation with an enormous and cold universe, there's something comical to the idea that we can really enforce our, our will on humanity. Power. Wow, haunted is right. That's going in the segue. There's segues between all these songs. That is uh, Poe off of Haunted. Controls the name of that one. <laughs> well, I tell you, that is some moody ass music. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy that, and and maybe it's because uh, I get to listen on headphones. But uh, I could see myself driving somewhere in the rain, maybe over to Kurt's house, <laughs> or some weed. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you, uh, was that your dad's lecture mode? The one yeah, that's yeah. his lecture mode, yeah. and that comes early in the CD. That um, was breakfast, Drew. <laughs> wow. Where there's, I, I recorded this little girl and created these conversations with him that I sort of never got to finish. Uh -huh. And he comes in and he sort of says, you know, what is it? And I'm, he's talking to me when I'm two from uh -huh. one of these cassettes and I'm crying. And this little girl says, you think I'll cry? I won't cry. I'll, I'll, I, I will, you know, go crazy before I cry. I'll go mad, right? right? And then it goes into control and that's like this resistance to this voice. Like, you know, I don't, uh -huh. don't want to anything to do with this thing and then it evolves over the record to a well, different place but you'll well, see as you know uh we got to take a break uh, normally i don't like art drew or any <laughs> any, any <laughs> even, even books, close, art yeah even close yeah. close relatives of art but uh i'm starting to get into this <laughs> this could be one of my new scenes <laughs> i could make this scene is what i'm saying <laughs> we need to talk about your wardrobe then all right <laughs> <laughs> this stuff's free what do you want all right we'll be back hello this is your radio It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Poe is here tonight. Haunted's the name for CD. Mark C. Danielewski is also here. That is uh, Poe's brother, or uh, Poe is uh, Mark's sister, depending on how you want to look at it. He is a uh, poet and author. House of Leaves is the name of the uh, book. I almost said CD again. And uh, we've gotten some pretty good reviews on it uh, so far on this show. <laughs> And uh, we normally don't get too many calls on people uh, that read. People that <laughs> read, yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, whether they uh, buy the book or get it from that house that has the books. What's that? Bookstore. No. Library. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one because it doesn't have the word book in it. There's no Very way you can remember that one. Jim. How old yes. is it? Eighteen. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Can't I, you're twenty-eight. <clears throat> I always wanted to say that. Doctor Drew, they said that uh, I was having problems forming my questions, so I wrote them down here, so we don't have any problems on the air. Good. Right. I really don't care about being on the air, and if you're going to rush through me, I'd like to talk to you off the air. Well, what but, is your question? Uh, uh, you stated on the show that the morning after pill was just like taking several doses of a regular pill. It is. It, it functions. It works the same as the birth control pill. But it's not the same chemical. It's the exact same chemical. Okay, well, in gearing up for your defending the morning after pill, you said that you went to the library, the place where they keep books out. I mean, yeah, found that's that the a book morning place, after yeah. pill is really less controversial as far, as far as preventing ovulation versus the actual aborting of the embryo, and the pill was what, worse. What I, no, no. Okay. What I said was that the, for some reason, the morning after pill, the levonorgestrel and, uh, 
uh, the hormone has become a battleground that for people that aren't reading the science. And if you read the science, it shows it really is probably no more likely to interfere with implantation than the regular birth control pill or than a couple of anti-inflammatory medications of which there are ten, hundreds of millions of prescriptions every year. But it's the same as the regular pill. Same as the regular pill. Okay. Until Sunday's show, I never heard you say that uh, repeated exposure to the morning after pill was bad. It's not bad. It's just not considered proper contraception because it's only 70% effective. So if you're, if you're using the morning after pill as your more means of contraception... You're in error. It's not a good contraceptive. It's a backup measure. That but can't be good for your hormones either, can it? What's that? The irritation of the lining of the uterus. What, that's the same as what the birth control pill does, it's too. It's the same. So that taking the triple dose or whatever isn't worse for the uterus no. than taking one every No. Day. In, right. fact, in fact, it, my understanding is, and this is my understanding of the data, that of the, the many, many m tens and tens of millions of users of the morning after contraception, there's never been a single adverse effect. Not a single, which is why wow. people are advocating it be a bit available over the counter. All right. I cut Jim off because I know he had a list of demands <laughs> at the top of his call. <laughs> and we may not get our hostage back, but we got to move on. I like guys who approach it that way. And if you think Drew's going to talk to you five seconds after the show goes off the air, you're sadly mistaken. You really could be uh, hemorrhaging from your head <laughs> and he not talk to you. He's not on the clock. Gwen? Yeah. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, I know you want to ask Mark a quick question. I, I just want to, uh, uh, Diana? Uh huh. Your boyfriend's penis tastes bad? Yeah. <laughs> just his? Well, um, like when I give him a blowjob, mm -hmm. it tastes extremely bad when he ejaculates. Oh, yeah. 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 And I somebody told me that if he, like, um, no. apple juice or something. Uh. Well, it couldn't hurt, but you, you, you might as well just get used to it. Hey, uh, listen, it took me a while to like beer. Hey, your friends from Culver City PD are here. Oh, those are my boys. <laughs> How you doing, guys? I rolled through a red uh, tonight. Oh. I got it. Uh, not a red, just a red arrow. I don't look at that as a real red. <laughs> hey, Deanna, mm -hmm. uh, you just got to get used to it. Okay. Uh, he, you're not going to change him. It, it's going to go from really bad to, to just bad. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, thanks. All right. Um, wait, can I say something? Yeah. Um, I just want to say that Poe, you rock. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Your uh -huh. lyrics and your um, music so intense. Oh, thank you so much. Uh -huh. Good luck with Thanks. the scene. Good night. Good, good times. All right, good, good times. Gwen? Can yeah. I just say, if yeah. she's not in love and it doesn't last, yeah. guys taste really differently. Maybe she's yeah. not with when the right one. When you're in love, one. it tastes different. To different people, too. A amen, sister. It's like, it's a like... Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Gwen? But it's yeah. true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I hey. had a question for Mark. Yeah. Um, there he is. I read House of Leaves. It's absolutely amazing, as I'm sure a million people have told you tonight. Um, what I was wondering is there's definitely an autobiographical nature to it. I understand both that and um, Haunted, right? Mm -hmm. And because it's got this autobiographical nature, Mark, are you planning on writing any other novels, or is this kind of your one shot about your life? Well, I wouldn't say... I think he has nothing left to say. I wouldn't exactly say it's an autobiography, and... Uh, I'm absolutely planning to write uh, more books, but since House of Leaves took 10 years, it'll probably take me a few years to come out with another one. Well, if uh, Mr. Hoity Toity would limit it to <laughs> under 100 pages like a good novel, it wouldn't take him that long. Mr. Right. Hoity Toity. We got to take Thanks, ourselves Adam. a uh, little break, and we'll be right back. Say goodbye. We we're just having some fun. I I want to uh, thank Poe and Mark for coming in here and uh, just uh, really just uh, not losing a step on this show. Does it have to be two years this time? No, please. Okay. House of Leaves is the name of the book. Uh, great reviews and uh, go out and get that. Haunted is the name of the CD. That is Poe's latest CD. Go out and get that. Support our uh, friends and uh, artists and uh, especially when they're doing good work. You know, <laughs> like you're not doing anyone a favor. 
You're doing yourself a favor. So thanks, guys. We <laughs> thanks do appreciate it. And, Thank you. And until next time, it's Adam Crow for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You're gay. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.